listening to KCFB Ferguson, 89.5 The Wave, and this is Fear the Dead Air, with your host, Jazz Hands. When civilization ends, it ends fast. That is right, you are listening to the one, the only... Fear the Dead Air here on 89.5 The Wave. I'm your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ Jazz Hands, rocking out in the studio, having a blast. Going to talk about last Sunday's epic Fear the Walking Dead episode, which I gotta say, fear, fear, you need to stop this, okay? Seriously, I'm so tired of this whiplash of emotions of liking you and then not liking you. You need to stay like this. This was a good episode. This was a very, very good episode. Stay like this, please. I beg, I beg you. I can't take no more. I can't take no more. Please stay like this because this was one of the better. This was definitely one of the better episodes. It had a little bit of problems, but the problems were definitely overlooked by the overall story and and what, you know, necessarily happened. So um, it's just going to be me today, Jazz Hands, which is totally fine because I... I get to hang out with you, and you're awesome, and, you know, we can just sit back and talk about Fear the Walking Dead. So, the episode title was, uh, Sikut Service? Sikut Service? I, I believe that's what it was called. I don't know. I apologize. It is really early in the morning for me. And <clears throat> Either way. So, yeah, you know, it was honestly one of the better episodes I, it really really was and and i i want to say something real quick because I, I i gotta get the bad a little bit out before the good because the bad's just minor it's just it's just minor fear please for the love of god fix your texts whenever they started speaking spanish i could not read it because it's not that it went by too fast it's a they had white on white it, it was like one of those you know uh, pictures that you see that, like, everybody makes fun of for, that they can't read it because it's, like, in a white spot, like, please fix that, I want to know what's going on fully, you know, Daniel's part, and, and, uh, the, 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 the crazy witch lady whose name I completely forgot, that's why I have to have other people here because I'm horrible with names, but, you know, they, they, I want to hear their full conversations, and I don't want, you know, white background with white text, and I, make it a little bit bigger too that'd be nice maybe my eyesight's going i don't know but to me it was you know that was about that so uh let's get right honestly into the review let's get let's get right into it so we i gotta talk about that first scene because i have a theory this is one of jazz hands is crazy oh my god what are you doing jazz hands how could you what theory now we know that the witch lady i'm just going to call her the witch lady because um she is crazy she's very very crazy and so i'm just going to call her the witch lady but we know that she poisoned the people at the church um and we see their eyes start to bleed and then they slowly died now what if and this is a big what if what if in this world because she poisoned them because she essentially poisoned these people and killed them what if somehow in some weird way because they were zombies or because they turned into walkers i apologize zombies do not exist in this world they are walkers but because they turned into walkers what if somehow that poison mixed with their weird kind of like what 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 if it kind of like what if what if when one of the walkers essentially turned or one of those people turned and from the poison and then bit somebody else and that person some you know got away and turned and maybe bit somebody else what if somehow that poison became a virus and turned air airborne and slowly made its way from Mexico up to the states and up to the prison. What if? What if that's the origin? What if they just gave us the origin of where the virus came from? Because we don't know what essentially, you know, we were assuming it's a dead body. It's the cane. So we don't know what kind of, you know, essentially new diseases the walkers could actually have. So could it, you know, be 
theorized or, you know, could it theoretically be that because they were poisoned and because their eyes started bleeding and, and they died, could that somehow have turned into a virus because it mixed, the poison mixed with the natural kind of, you know, funkiness of the walkers. And so whenever they bit somebody, like one would bite somebody, they got away, they would turn, then, you know, bite somebody and slowly it would spread from going from biting the poison and transferring the poison to the poison kind of slowly morphs and turns into a, you know, airborne virus. Could that be a thing? That's what I'm wondering. And that's, that, that's what I'm wondering, you know, and, and, and I know it's probably like somebody's out there like, no, because it's, these are the different stuff. And it's also like, yeah, well, the dead, you know, this, the dead's risen, you know, the dead's risen and Rick's been out, you know, running around and he still can't, you know, win a fight when he really needs to against, you know, uh, porch D. So, you know, that's just, that's just one little, you know, one little theory that I, I, I have, I, I, I don't know if it's true. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. I, it's a good theory. I think it's a fun theory. I think it's definitely interesting, but so, okay, Chris, I gotta talk about Chris because what is going on with that kid? He's, you know, people are saying that he's going full Shane and I agree with them, you know, and, and Chris Hardwick and them on talking dead. They're like, Oh no, 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 he's not doing that. He's not doing that. He's not going Chris. He's totally going full Shane and you never go full Shane. You know, you never go full Shane. He's, like, I don't know. I feel, I don't know what's with him. I really don't know what's with him. I mean, he watched Madison almost get eaten after he blatantly told his dad, you know, oh yeah, well, Madison stuck up for me. So it's like, there's really no reason for him to not like Madison, even though Madison said, it's okay. We'll figure something out. You did what you had to do. You did what you had to do, you know, um, which makes me kind of wonder if because she said, oh, you did what you had to do, blah, 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 that kind of justified it more in his mind. And maybe she should have been like, no, you shouldn't have done that. You messed up royally and you need to live with that consequence. And that that may be, that may be what's going on with him. He's He's starting to kind of go into this weird sociopath, serial killer type mentality or, you know, um, this weird mindset and... Then because he's not getting, he's not taking responsibility, I guess, for his actions. Um, and, 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 and you could justify it. Like, honestly, if, if Chris was just like, he pissed me off and I killed him. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, that's not sociopath. I get that. I understand that. Okay. But... Still, I mean, and the fact that he, you know, there there was no real reason for him to sit there and watch Madison almost get eaten. And then what was up with him threatening Alicia? That was just, like, really good way, Chris, to, to um prove your point that you're innocent. You know, really good way. Like, hey, no, I didn't do that. I would never do that. I would never do that. If you tell anybody, I swear to God, I'll hurt you. I'll, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I swear. Like, Chris, dude, you need to stop. I, 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 I'm imagining him like, like, Smeagol. Or, 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 um, um, what, what, what's his face from Lord of the Rings, you know, my precious, like, I'm imagining him like that, like, there's two Chris's, there's one that's like, hey, you know, Madison stuck up for me, and I want to protect my family, and I, I, we've gone through hard times, but I, I, I want to try to do more, and I want to try to prove myself, and then there's the other one that's just like, I like to watch people die, I like to watch these walkers die, and I've secretly hated Madison for a while, and so it's very, very bipolar, I guess, of him. And I'm wondering where he's going to go. I'm wondering what his whole deal's going to be. Because it doesn't help your case when you walk in uh, to the people, essentially, that you almost watch die and threaten. And stand over their bed with a knife. I was actually, though, kind of hoping that there was going to be a scene where they're like, What are you doing? Get out, get out. Instead of them being like that, like... Oh, no, I was just looking at the knife. I swear, I wasn't doing anything. I know it looks bad. I apologize for earlier. I swear, like, because honestly, that would be, uh, somehow, if if it was a zombie apocalypse, knowing my luck, I, I would accidentally, something like that would happen. I'd get accused of something, and then I'd be walking around and be like, oh, cool, look, a knife, and then, you know, scare people. So, <laughs> that, that just the dumb luck, that, that would be my, you know thing and so I was kind of hoping Chris would just be like no no I didn't mean to do that I didn't mean to do that at all um but yeah I don't know where he's going um 
I don't know what they're going to be doing with him. He's he's interesting. He's he's definitely kind of he's he's definitely a char- a complex character and I'm interested to see where he's going. And you know, I actually kind of retract my statement earlier. I still think it might be true, but I think it's going to be one of those things where we're not looking at the evolution of a ba- of bad guys. We still very well may be um but we're looking at the evolution of how normal people essentially kind of go crazy. And so maybe they'll go bad, but I, they're definitely going crazy, especially with Chris and from Nick from Nick's episode. Uh, looks like they're going to be going completely, completely crazy. And, and that's going to be interesting. And, and, you know, speaking of like Madison too, honestly, Madison in this episode, I'm really starting to like, I'm really starting to like her a lot more than I did before. I really think that she's the unofficial leader of the group. I thought it was going to be Travis, but she's, she's the unofficial leader. She's the one that kind of takes control. She's the one that will kind of come up with the plan. She still needs refining. She's no Rick Grimes. She might be a Grimes or, you know, uh, Andrea sister or cousin, or she, she might be related to the group. And we might find that out at some point down the line, way, way, way down the line. But you know, we'll, We'll see, and I'm kind of hoping that at some point we do get their backstory because it's getting to the point now where I am invested in these characters and I do want to see what happens. I'm starting to really like these characters. They're finally starting to be fleshed out. And apparently, apparently Fear the Walking Dead loves to kind of contradict me, <laughs> they, which is a good thing. Let me just tell you that. It's a good thing. Let me Let me just get that completely clear. I like that it's contradicting me because I heard that they were going to be having the end of the season next week. That's what I originally heard. They said that on TV, and I went, oh, man, season finale? Really? This soon? Nothing happened. This is a mediocre season at best. Why? Because nothing really, like, a lot happened, but nothing really happened. Well, a lot happened, but for a part A of a season, you know, not enough happened for an entire season. Um, But we're it's the mid-season finale next week. I don't know where that came from. It must have been maybe a typo and they just kind of overlooked it or something, but we're getting a mid season finale. So, uh, let me clap my hands. Good job. I'm, I'm really actually quite excited now because this is a good start of uh, a season and I want to see what they do with the rest of it. And I'm wondering if they're going to space it out to where we're going to get the summer break and then we're going to come back maybe in September or, um, August and continue with seven, eight more episodes and then lead into the walking dead, which I'll be fine with. And then we get the walking dead and then we'll have fear right after that. So instead of having that weird season, like I talked about where it's going to be season one comes before, you know, season six of walking dead season two comes after season six of walking dead. And then season three comes before, season seven of walking dead it's going to be season two comes season two part a comes after walking dead and season two part b comes before walking dead so i'm actually quite excited and i'm glad because now we're going to have those fully flushed out characters and i'm I'm happy but yeah madison definitely uh has changed quite a lot she's become such a stronger character in my mind i i am starting to like her and i do like that i i do like that as a leader I guess uh, Travis did kind of call her out to where it's like, oh, you're saying we need to be united, but then you're flipping out on Chris after I've helped Nick and everything like that. And so it's kind of actually, the more that I think about it, really kind of fun. And I am liking where it's going, where instead of Rick Rimes' group where they're tight it, you know, all they have to do is look at each other and be like, okay, I got you. I know where you're coming from. I know we're going to... We're, we're going to take this place. We're going to fight. I can tell it in your eyes. We're going to fight and we're going to kill every single person in this place. Um, there's a lot of internal struggle that goes on within this group. And that's actually quite interesting to watch. And that's something that we haven't really seen too, too much of in The Walking Dead. This internal struggle. And I think it might be getting there, especially with Season 7. And I kind of hope it does get there. Because I still think Rick needs to kind of pay for what happened both with what happened with the saviors and Negan and with his own group 
maybe not trusting him as much, being like, you got us into this battle, and look what happened to us. Look look what happened to us. So, um, but yeah, Mad- Madison's definitely coming kind of into her, into her own, and I'm really starting to like like her as a character much, much more than I ever have before. And Travis, I, I, I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's kind of nice because I don't, you know, predictions. I can, I only have my predictions, but there's so very few where it's like, I don't know where this is going. And I'm happy about that. I'm really actually happy about this. This show's finally starting to really take off for me to where the complaints are getting less and less. And this is how you, you do it. Um, Maybe the only other little complaint I have is that it did seem very season two ish, um, of The Walking Dead, I should say, not of its own series. Because let's face it, you pull up into a gate, you meet, you know, a nice old person that you know will feed you and do stuff for you, and then it re- you tur- it turns out that they have walkers hidden away because they still think that they're people. The only difference is Herschel thought that they were just sick and this witch lady, you know, thinks is the next stage of evolution. You know, she's, she's, she's Magneto essentially with the walkers. So it still felt very season two of walking dead. And I can, I definitely see those parallels going on and I kind of hope they steer away from it just a little, you know, steer the boat just a little bit away this way. But yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to pick up. So, um, I, I mentioned Nick before and how I'm kind of worried about him and Nick and Ophelia. Honestly, I think there might be something going on. I think that there might be something kind of going on between the, the two of them. You know, he's, he's been nothing but, you know, nice to her and she's, she's kind of been apprehensive, but then, you know, they had that little moment, you know, uh, where they went and, uh, pray to um Ophelia's mom who passed and that was actually a really you know nice scene and and I'll damn it I ship it damn it damn it I ship it I ship I ship the hell out of those two I I hope those two crazy kids get together if um circumstances of Nick don't get in the way because Nick seems to be kind of being manipulated a little bit by the witch lady she he seems to be kind of being manipulated um very much so it, i think that it's his it's been in his mind and because he's been on the drugs because he's you know overdosed and he because he's because he's been an addict he's very much he's he's been because he's an addict he's he's very much used to being a zombie essentially used to being a walker not being fully there and as weird as it is i think he relates to the walkers a lot because he sees himself and there was a clip from next episode or a line that he said where it's like you know oh they're you know i can live with them i can survive with them and i kind of got that feeling when they were at the plane and they were were attacked and he came up and was kind of um mean mugging though the one walker that was in his face um it seemed very much like he might be turning into a uh walker uh um sympathizer uh it's still early morning i can't think of that word sympathizer sympathizer he might be turning into a walker sympathizer and that's going to be kind of interesting to see but i'm it's what madison said to the you know the witch lady where the witch lady's like oh you know he's strong he's strong and it's like she he's he's fragile he's really fragile and so it's actually really kind of interesting to see the dynamic going on with within other people's interpretation of alex versus um madison's interpretation without uh not alex um nick with People's interpretation of Nick and uh, um, um, Madison's interpretation with Nick because it seems like they're like, oh, yeah, he's a really nice kid. He's strong. He, he has a good heart, which very well may be. But Madison still – because there's, there's a bunch of dynamics that you could essentially go with. And I think one of them definitely is Madison is – that's my baby boy. I don't want him – running around with the walkers. I don't want him getting hurt. I don't want him doing anything like that. So I'm going to try to protect him more. Um, And then I think there's another kind of layer of, well, I know him. He's done this so many times where he's quit. He's going to rehab. And we thought that he was going to be back. I'm not holding my breath this time. 
I'm not going to hold my breath this time with these circumstances because he's a very nice kid. I love him to death because he's my son, but I feel he's going to slip again. He's going to slip again. He's going to find another addiction and because it's him. And I essentially can't trust him as much as that pains her, as much as it pains Madison. She can't trust him um, because, you know, history repeats itself and he might go from one addiction to the, to, to the next. Uh, his, 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 his days might be numbered. Of course, I could very well be wrong because I do like him. I think he is a nice character, but that might be the whole point. And that's where it's interesting to me. And I'm actually having a lot of fun with it where I don't know what he's going to do. He might start using again. He might go crazy. I mean, he had that mental breakdown in the church where he was staring at the owl. And it's like, you know, well, last when was the last time you were in church? And, you know, this all happened essentially. So he's, I'm, I'm interested to see. And, and it's, it's gotten, it's interesting. It's very interesting. And I hate that almost every episode I'm like, oh, I, 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 I think he's going to start going back. I think he's going to start going back. But I guess that's kind of what they wanted you to do because that's maybe what families of people who, you know, use drugs and stuff, substance abuse and stuff like that go through where somebody could be clean, but you're still worried that one slip and they're back into their old habits. And if they're doing that, that's a really good job. Really good job, Fear. I, again, I, I applaud you like one, 100%. But, but I, I think the crazy witch lady is definitely manipulating, manipulating him into feeling a certain way towards these walkers and slowly slowly but surely it could it could be an act he could know how crazy the witch lady is and you know be fine but you know i you know i i I have i have no idea where they're gonna go with nick and that's that's gotten me um excited now i will also say this one thing that i really liked about the episode is that this was and and i hate (laughs) this is gonna make me sound like a complete monster but i liked that they kind of had kid walkers being killed i liked that a lot i really really liked that because essentially in a horde of walkers we've only seen adults but like realistically there would be adults children teenagers everything everything would be walkers and i kind of want and i want it in the walking dead and i definitely want it more in fear i want to see a herd of walkers I want to see the dangers of having to deal with grown-up walkers versus kid walkers. I want to see that kind of dynamic play out. And I know that's kind of bad of me to say, but it'd be interesting because we're so used to, you know, oh, there's a big one, there's a big one, but, you know, you got to watch the ankle biters. And I want to see that, you know, in a horde of zombies, like, or in a horde of uh, walkers, I should say. I keep slipping up and saying zombies, I apologize. But, you know, in a horde of walkers, If you're boom, hit the head, boom, hit the head, boom, hit the head. And then the kid comes up because you're looking at the zombie walkers. I apologize. Um, Because you're looking at the walkers, you know, coming at you. You're not going to see a little kid all of a sudden sneak by and just all of a sudden bite your leg or something like that. So I'm interested to see where I'm interested to see more. I want to see more kid walkers. And that's. That's horrible for me, and I know I'm going to hell, but it's interesting, and it's a new dynamic that we haven't seen too much of. Let's just say we haven't seen too, too much of, and I'm ready to see it. And, you know, uh, speaking of, like, kids, Daniel, Daniel, I mean, because I was thinking of the scene where, you know, they essentially were killing the uh, kid walkers, and you see the one part where Daniel's holding, either holding the kid by the throat, or he is the kid being held by the throat, I don't know, um, I don't know where, what that is, but he's, he's kind of starting to go crazy himself, Chris, Nick, and Daniel are the three characters that are, in my mind, the most mentally unstable, um, but Daniel may be more so in a right way to where I think he's seen, I think he has seen, um, the, 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 I think he's seen the warning signs of battle before. 
I mean, he 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 has. He's has to. He he's seen the battle. He's seen the warning signs of battle before. He knows kind of what's going on, and it might be the paranoia. But essentially, he's right. He's right to you know sniff out this place because it's too good to be true. He's right to kind of question everything because that's what he's done all his life. He's had to have questioned stuff. You know, he's he's needed to question stuff, and so by doing this, by by questioning what's going on in this world, by questioning who these people are, what are they doing, what's their what's their deal. He's not wrong. He's really not wrong, honestly. And of course, he's like, oh, I'm not hungry. I'm not. I'm not real hungry. I don't want to eat. Which. I, I take it as two ways. Either he's depressed and he's really starting to lose it, or he's going back into that war zone mind. And it's like, I don't want food. I don't want water. I don't want sleep. I want to fight. I want to be in battle. Or I, he's getting that uneasy feeling like the calm before the storm before a battle that he's probably faced. And, you know, probably he's had to kill kid soldiers before or, or slaughter villages or who knows what he's done. Um, but I think he's starting to kind of slip back into that mindset of something's going to happen. There's this crazy, crazy witch lady that's doing all sorts of stuff, you know, poisoning people. She's feeding dogs to walkers. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready because something's going to drop at the, you know, at the, something's going to go down at the drop of a hat. And when it does, I'm going to be ready. So his, his, his mentally unstableness, I don't think, is unwarranted. He definitely needs to be. He definitely needs to be like that. I'm still. And I hate to say, I'm still waiting for that major death in the group, but I, I think it might very well be him. I think it very well might be him. He might do something, and the crazy witch lady will kill him, and that might either make the group stronger or uh, weaker, depending, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but Daniel's definitely interesting. And I'm, I'm really kind of excited to see his whole story arc and where he goes. And one thing that I am wondering too, is I'm wondering if the owl is like, I mean, Chris Hardwick said something about it before, but I completely missed it on talking Dad. I forgot it, but I'm wondering if that might've been a symbol he's, he has seen in the past that meant it's a certain group. Like, I'm wondering if the Abigails, or at least the witch lady, was a part of a very bad group. And because he saw the owl, he knows something. These are these were my enemies. These were my enemies at some point. These were my enemies in the past. And uh, now I'm pretty much... Um, oh, what's that saying? You know, uh, a lamb... And the lions then, you know, lamb about to slaughter or something like that. You know, he's he he doesn't trust them. Which un, not unwarranted. Let's just say it's not unwarranted. So I think I think Daniel Daniel's story arc's definitely gonna be interesting and I wanna see what they fully do with him now. Uh Strand. Strand in this episode, honestly, was amazing. He was truly, truly amazing. I really liked his story arc. You it's kinda it's one of those things where I I'm, I'm, I still don't know what's going to happen or what he not what's going to happen. I, I still don't know what he his deal was because he because he was I still don't know what his whole deal was because he essentially was he he, he I felt OK, because last week I said he loved. All right, last week I said I think he might be manipulating Thomas Abigail because to get what he wants, but then it's clear he definitely cared about him, but then there was still that kind of manipulation. Not manipulation, but he, he said, oh, I'll go with you, I'll go with you, and then he, you know, killed him. And I'm wondering if that's because he knew they're, they're, they're not going to be together when they turn. They're going to be two walkers that just want to kill, that just want to eat. And he said it to him to comfort him. And that's where I'm thinking Strand maybe says what he's, he... He might say something that he doesn't mean to maybe either look good or get the better outcome. I still think he loved Thomas Abigail. I really, really do. But I think he has so many defenses up. 
that he'll he'll say what he'll say what he has to to make somebody happy or to survive um and that could be a very dangerous trait you know dangerous quality to have in this world say what you want to survive um but i i, I he was he was interesting he was he was definitely i liked his whole story arc and the fact the fact that thomas told madison you know hey watch after him when you know i'm gone that that for one with madison does make me think that okay she's that she's 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 the unofficial leader she's the unofficial unofficial leader we're gonna get a um madison tatorship or you know a um madison democracy madisonocracy something like that i don't know but i think madison's definitely the leader now and the fact that thomas abigail was like hey watch watch strand um and honestly i like I, I think because of with travis and everything i think that madison's right hand man strand i think the two definitely see eye to eye on some circumstances and she's she 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 under she, she, she i think she gets him i think she's dealt with people before with like him and he's i think he gets her you know she's essentially the only one that because the the others have kind of been voiceless in or you know have have said stuff to him in the group that have been like hey that's not right but he's like hey it's my boat i don't care madison's kind of the only one that's like yeah well we'll throw you overboard so she's the only one that's kind of she she still submits to him because it is his boat and they do need him for mexico for the grand scheme of things but i think he thinks that if need be, she's more than willing. She doesn't care about anything to to help her family survive. She will kill him, and I think that for Strand sits with him nicely because it's like okay, she'll do whatever it takes to survive to help a group. I can respect that, and you're going up against me, and you're not afraid of me, so I respect you. I respect you more. Same with like you know Thomas Abigail. He went up against him. I think he likes people that challenge him. I think Strand loves people that challenge him, that, you know, question what he's doing because Strand's a very smart guy. He's very intellectual. He's, you know, smart and intellectual. Oh my God, jazz hands. Awesome. Nice. Uh. <laughs> but no, he's a very intellectual person. He's a very poetic person. You know, he's very Shakespearean, like Thomas Abigail said. And so because of that, you know, he's intimidating to most people. Um, and people will be like, Hey, you know, that's not nice. You shouldn't say that like Travis, when he was trying to fix the boat, he's like, let me, you know, I, I'm a pie. Let me just apologize. And, you know, he'll give his little half-assed, um, apology, you know, a spiel his, Oh yes. Well, I'm sorry. You're right. I, I was wrong. I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have gone off on you. I shouldn't have done that. But you know, Madison's the only one that's like, yeah, no, you you don't do that with me and my family. We need you, but don't cross the line because we will. I will kill you if need be. And I think he can be like, I respect that more so than that was mean, but I'm going to submit to you because I you still have a boat. But just be nice to me. You know, I think I think I think he likes to be challenged. Like I said, I think he likes to be challenged, and I think he he likes Madison, and I, th- and I think Thomas Abigail sees that. Um, and he's just like, Hey, yeah, take, take care of him. Take care of him. He's gonna, he's gonna need it. And, you know, I don't, it's so weird that Mrs. What's her face. The witch lady is so into death. I wanted to, I do want to talk about her because she's so into death. She's so like, this is the next stage of human evolution. This is interesting fascinating for me blah 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 blah. you know i'm so proud of you uh strand that you're gonna you know do this and turn with one of them and i'll take care of you and it makes me wonder how long have they known about the apocalypse like could she have somehow i'm not saying that she created the apocalypse but could like the apocalypse have essentially started in mexico and they kind of got it under control for a while and then one got out and then it just spread like a plague, like a wildfire once when stuff happened. Like, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering the more, you know, science behind it. And that's where <clears throat> I'm saying, AMC, if you want to have a quote unquote Walking Dead television universe, like the cinematic uh, Marvel universe, 
Um, you know, fight the Walking Dead or kill the Walking Dead. You know, have it be the military side. Have see really not just the person's perspective, but get those. Because if I was to do that, it would be interesting because it would be the military's perspective and it would be, you might not, it would be interesting because you could play it to where you, you might not see a walker till season finale. And all it is is like, well, we've been getting weird reports of stuff, what's going on and have, you know, a guy from the military tracing in stuff. And then at the end of the season, you know, you don't just see a walker, you see, you know, a horde, like a couple walkers coming and then that's where the fight starts. And then maybe at the end of season two or midway through season two, that's when the napalming of every major city happens. You know, we'd get the military's aspect of things more so than the civilian's aspect of things so leading into it and then you know waking up in a coma a good couple months later two months later i believe and going like that but uh, i am safe i'm here your friendly neighborhood dj jazz hands i'm here and i'm i'm willing to talk i'm willing to talk and make a deal let's let's get this thing on the road let's get this thing on the road but <laughs> no so the witch lady like i'm wondering what her whole thing is she i think she's very manipulative especially towards people she can manipulate like Nick, because notice she hasn't really done anything, but she was in a lot of the, she was like the main focus of the episode. Every other scene she was in. Um, but I mean, she, she's definitely, she definitely manipulated Nick and she is going to manipulate Nick. And that's where I think it's going to happen in the future. I think she's going to manipulate Nick and Nick's going to be, because he might be such a nice guy, but an addict, you know, be like, Oh, well, you know, this is one of those things where I, Blah, 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 this, that, or the other. You know, I'm going to follow her because she's the only one that's making sense in this world now. Um, and then, you know, to Daniel, I think, I think Daniel can see how dangerous she really is. I think Daniel definitely sees how dangerous she is. And that's where he's worried and she knows it. And she's kind of puffing out her chest now to him. Like, hey, you know, I don't care if you know what I've done and what I haven't done. What are you going to do? Your family's safe with here, here with me. You cross a line, I'm kicking you out. It's the same thing with the boat. It, it's the exact same thing with the boat, but the town. And that's where I'm interested to see what's going to happen. And um, predictions for, you know, next episode. Like I said, I think Nick's going to go crazy. I don't know if it's him actually going crazy or if he's just, hey, let's see. I'm you know, going to manipulate this woman to protect my family, you know, give her kind of what she wants and we'll take this place. We'll take this place. I kind of hope they take the place, but, um, I think that the walkers are definitely going to get out. It's going to be just like season two, mid season two, the walkers are going to get out. I don't think they're going to find Sophia in, in the barn. Um, but I think that the walkers are going to get out. I think that they're going to have to fight and they're going to go back to the boat and, where it will go from there, I don't know. They could either travel around on the boat again, looking for a safe place. They could actually go inland more, you know, in Mexico, jumping around from place to place to place, looking at what's going on down there. Um, maybe try to get back into the States. Um, Alex, I think, is definitely going to be trailing them. Although, how she's going to get into... How she's going to get into Mexico with how much high security it is, is beyond me. So that's where I'm thinking they might go back to the States because I don't think we're done with Alex yet. I think she's going to become a main character with the group or she's going to be the main antagonist that's chasing the group to kill the group. Um, but I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be definitely interesting it's going to be very very interesting to say the least and that's where i'm excited that's where i'm fully fully excited to see what happens and you're doing good fear you're doing good i will openly admit you're doing very very good and i'm 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 really starting to like the series and i'm i'm proud that i'm starting to like the series i'm proud that you're really starting to make me care could have done a little bit better and it's not what i wanted but you're getting me into it. You're getting me into it. You're getting me hooked. And I, I appreciate it. And I, I'm excited for this the mid-season finale. And I'm excited for part B. I'm excited to part B and see fully where this goes. So either, either way, thanks everybody so, so much for tuning in. I had a 
a super big blast. It's it's been so much fun, but thank you for tuning in. Uh and I will see you next week.